Paul, Granny, Jethro. I'm home. I'm finally home. Oh, I've been out on the road for three weeks, going to the different shows. I'm so glad to be back home where I can sit a spell and take my shoes off here in the mud room. Welcome everybody to Living Figuratively. This is the 52nd episode, which is kind of incredible because that means we've been doing it for exactly one year. So it's the one year anniversary of Living Figuratively every single Thursday night for the past full year. So I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. Welcome to Living Figuratively. This is the show that still keeps asking the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Each week, I take you to an area of my house and show you pieces from my collection. I show you my own work. And the past three weeks, I've been out on the road at the, uh, the Woman Show at Lakeland and then at the Bryn Du Art Show which um, was all the way down in Granville, Ohio. So I'm glad to be setting a spell, coming home to the mud room, which is the homiest room in the house. Not homeliest, homiest room. Um, and I'm gonna show you our mud room. So basically, in our mud room, we have storage. It's storage palooza, because when we built this house, um, we had five people living here, so we had six, we made six cubbies because the answer to the question, do you want more storage, is yes. Um, we did cubbies, we did all kinds of things like, for instance, under the cubbies, we've got socks. Socks here, so you can put on your socks before you head out the door. Then, because it's Cleveland in the winter, we keep our winter stuff here in this basket. Hooks to hang up. Because it's Cleveland in the winter, I keep more winter stuff up in the top basket. And because it's Ohio, which is a red state, I keep my pro-choice activewear there as well. There's my, there's my pussy hat, um, which will come in handy at some point. Um, up above, we've got curated clutter, which you know that I'm all about curated clutter. I've got a little bit of a theme going because this is a kid-friendly place where the kids, you know, used to head off to school with their lunches. I've got a lunchbox theme going on up there. Unfortunately, I don't have one of my own lunchboxes from back when I was a kid because I had the Barbie Campus Queen lunchbox and somehow over the past 45 years, 50 years, it has disappeared. And I have seen it at antique stores and the first time I saw it, it was $75 and I was like, wow, that's a lot. Next time I saw it, it was $170 or $125, and I thought, I'll be damned if I'm gonna buy that lunchbox back again. So, you won't see that lunchbox here unless I can find it, you know, at a reasonable price. Um, but so I did, you know, curated clutter up there. Then I also did some curated clutter over here on this side, where here we've got a little theme with the Fisher Price pull toys. Most of these are not from my childhood. Maybe the school bus is from my childhood. But I'm a big fan of Fisher-Price toys. Um, I totally remember the little people from my childhood where they were the choking hazards. They were these little nubs that oh, you could totally choke on. Uh, then when my kids were little, they had, you know, evolved to be something bigger where a kid couldn't choke on them. And they were, you know, really nice, well-made little solid things that didn't have pieces and parts that could break off of them. So I've always liked the Fisher Price toys, which is why I did a curated clutter up there too with that. Um, over here on this side, we have more hooks because for some reason we have hundreds and hundreds of coats, a lot of coats, <laughs> coat for every season. Uh, and then a bench where we can set a spell, take our shoes off. This We made, had this custom pillow made with fabric on it that that I picked out and it's been sitting there ever since and we've been sitting on it setting a spell taking our shoes off um, one of the other fun things that I did I've always wanted to live in a house with a laundry chute and I never have so we decided to do a laundry chute um, see up there there's a hole now you'll see that this laundry chute is really not doing anything it's not functional 
because it's in the wrong place. Essentially, laundry chutes have to be above your laundry room and you know your bedroom is like when your bedroom is above your laundry room you can just throw it in a hole and it goes down and goes right to the laundry but that's not the way that our house is and the laundry chute ended up being in a funky part where nobody's taken off their clothes so it doesn't function as a laundry chute but one of the things that we did with this cabinet since because it was a nice big cabinet this is where I keep my travel brochures. I have different boxes for the different places that we've been. And um, it's also something that I haven't used for a long time because we haven't traveled anywhere for so long. But hopefully, hopefully we will at some point. But still, it's a nice, nice cabinet. All kinds of, you know, stuff here. More storage, storage, storage of Palooza. And um, under the counters, one of the things that I did was um, my, my sort of, um, concept with cleaning up. It's easier to clean up if all you have to do is kind of kick it over to the side. So that's why we have all our shoe boot trays under there, um, where if a shoe is out here in the middle, you just kick it in there and you've cleaned up. So that's good. But you guys did not come to see storage. You came to see art. So let's back up and we'll look at art in the mudroom. These two right here in the entryway, which they work perfectly in these spots, um, are two of my kids, Eric and Mark, from probably about 10 years ago. These two paintings actually won Best in Show at the Valley Art Center in 2011, and um, they won it as a, you know, as a diptych, and they've been together ever since. I took the reference for these photos when we were in Hawaii on the road to Hana, which is in Maui. It's this windy, twisty, very scary ride along the cliffs, which um, I'm glad that my husband was driving and I had my little uh, magnetic wrist bracelet that keeps you from getting nauseous on. And um, I'm glad my husband was driving and he was driving carefully, not the way he usually drives. Uh, and so, you know, these were at a rest stop. I took some good reference photos. My favorite thing that I did on this particular painting, and I'm gonna show you, is um, I, the way I did Mark's hair, which I, his, he had this lovely little crew cut, this little blonde crew cut where you could see some of the, the sun hitting different parts of it. And I just, I loved the way I did it and I had fun doing it. So now let's go kitty corner to this special kind of fancy corner of the mudroom. And there's nothing that says the mudroom can't also have some fancy regal touches. Um, the centerpiece, or the starting piece, actually, of this little corner is this beautiful drawing by Susan Lyon. She has demoed at the Portrait Society many times, and I've met her and seen her and talked to her, and she's an awesome person. Um, I even have her book. She's got this this beautiful book that um, was she was selling at the Portrait Society and I got myself this book because it inspires me a lot. Like anytime, especially if I'm starting a painting, I always want to look through it and just find some of her amazing, you know, beautiful, beautiful brush strokes to really kind of get me going along the, you know, on the right path. Um, and this beautiful drawing that she has here, it is a uh, charcoal and white pencil, and um, it was from a show at the Alexandria uh, Principal Gallery, which, which was, it was a women painting women show, which was called Pay It Forward. So basically all the works in the show, some portion of the proceeds from it went towards a good cause. And I got the catalog, too, which is wonderful. I love seeing work from my collection in a catalog. The name of um, this painting is Delicate Lace, and it, you know, fits beautifully. And my favorite thing, my favorite thing about it, I loved how it has such softness and such power and such solidity, too. She's, she's managed to, to do sort of the best of both those very difficult worlds to, to navigate. So it's a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. It's the, and, and it's framed in a very glamorous kind of a way. You know, it's actually not even something that I would, I would frame something this glamorously, but 
it was like that already. So I thought, okay, let's, let's do it. It's got this gorgeous little copper leaf inset in the bevel and this really thick bevel um, and, you know, a beautiful frame. So it really, it, it works beautifully in this corner. And what else I've done in the corner to sort of add to the, you know, glamorous experience is I've got this, this fancy mirror. This mirror is probably a little fancy for a, you know, for the mudroom, but this is like my fancy corner here. Um, and this, cor this mirror, it looks like it would have gold on it. It actually doesn't. It's just green and red, but it's got this gold shininess to it somehow. I love a lamp. I always put a lamp everywhere I possibly can uh, because it adds glow and light right where you are. And it makes things, makes things cozy. And this little side table where normally it's got bed and bath coupons and, you know, CVS coupons and stuff like that on it, um, it, it makes just this nice little corner. Now, up on high, ruling this corner is a beautiful painting by um, Karen Offutt, who right now happens to be having a show at the Abend Gallery. It's a um, 52, a different solo show every week online, which makes it accessible to the whole world. And she's got some amazingly beautiful works for sale in this show. I am sitting on my hands big time trying to not buy something because, um, you know, I've got five pieces of hers in my collection already. So, um, but if you don't have five pieces of hers or if you don't have any of hers yet, Karen Offit at the Ab Abend Gallery, check it out. I'll put the links on my website. You will find some beautiful, beautiful work. And, you know, that that is a beautiful tiny piece that really just presides over this corner so nicely. Now, let's move along upwards here. Okay, there's a transom. This is the garage door. This is the door to the garage. Um, when we were building the house, one of the things I discovered was your door to the garage has to be what is called a fire door, which means that your car has to be able to be on fire for 30 minutes outside in the garage before the fire comes busting through into the house. Somehow that's a, that's a safety thing. So um, this is a fire door and a fire door cannot have a glass transom like that. So the glass transom doesn't go to the other side. It's just a fake glass transom. But I thought, well, why not make it like there's beautiful sky out there, we'll pretend. And so I painted this, you know, sky. I was using a little too much thalo in my skies at the time. Um, but I painted this, you know, sky there, put it behind the glass and maybe it's a little trompe l'oeil. Coming back down, we've got another area of the mudroom where you wouldn't think you want to squeeze art, but I like to squeeze art wherever I can squeeze art. Um, hanging salon style with these utilitarian thingy bobs of, you know, 21st century living. I've got this piece that I did. Um, it's only five by five and it's framed in copper, kind of to like bring the circle back to the, the glowing copper gold pieces over there. Um, and she is available, so she'll see her on my website. Oops, I dropped my ribbon. Um, so that's how I coordinated the, uh, you know, little wall full of small with these funky elements. Let's scan on over here. If you haven't seen enough art in the mudroom, here's a little bit more. Every time I come down the stairs, these are the pieces that I see. Like I can get this when I'm coming down the stairs. Um, the top piece is called Mind Reader and it was from a carnival themed show that I was included in a while back at the 112 Gallery um, and Leslie Mez was the one who curated it. So everything had to be carnival, theory, you know, carnival related. And I decided to just do like a teeny tiny one. I've got one that's the mind reader and one, another one that's elsewhere, which is called, shit, I can't even remember, the fortune teller. So both of them, they're, you know, clairvoyant. Um, and it's a self-portrait, which is all red and red is, you know, you know, I love red except for, you know, red state stuff, but brings me down to this beauty by Arabella Proffer. This one, it's called On a Short Leash. And it, it for me, it sings exactly, it, it's very quintessential Arabella Proffer. 
Arabella does these gorgeous, iconic people that she's made up with such precision and smoothness. And they've got this little, you know, goth but decorative um, statements on society, the world, feminism, women, and, um, you know, she's got these black bubbles in the background, and she's got this, this delicate black ribbon holding her, holding her hair. It's, you know, which is gorgeous, bright, bright red, you know, it no holds barred, it's bright, bright red. And then the way that she's got the, um, the, the sheer fabric on her, on her, her outfit, it's, you know, it's all, it, it's all amazing. Um, one, I'm going to tell you something about, we're going to bring everything down a little bit. Um, Arabella Proffer is a wonderful, wonderful, amazing artist who I got to know several, a bunch of, more than several years ago um, when she posed me for the Chicks with Balls project. And at the time, one of the things that she was struggling with was she had uh, this cancer this very rare type of cancer that kept coming back. It, you know, it would come back to mess up her life and her health for a while, and you know, they would operate, they would remove things, they would, you know, fix it up, and then she would go back and live her fabulous, art-filled, you know, fashionable, just really fabulous rock and roll lifestyle. You know, she she lived lives to the fullest. Um, one of the sad things that has happened, and this was during COVID, maybe over the past six months, is her cancer has come back with a really, really terrible, terrible vengeance. And she has been given now a terminal diagnosis. So um, she is selling off a lot of her work. In fact, quite a bit of her work um, is being sold off. So I don't think that any of her portraits are available anymore. I believe they have all been sold which is a really good thing, but it's also a really sad thing. Um, she, the, if you are interested though in Arabella's work, she still has books. She has a lot of books for available and she may have some drawings and she may have some of her abstracts. Um, this book of hers that she just put out right now, it's called Lips, Eyes and Hair. And I am thrilled that two of my Arabella's are in it. This one you saw um, a bunch of weeks ago in the dining room and on a short leash is also in this in this book. So I'm thrilled and this book is on her website and you can order it and any you know anything that you do to help her because not only you know this is just a horrible terrible time for them um, it's financially a devastating time as well because her husband has had to quit his job uh, to care for her and to be with her during, you know, whatever time she's got left. And she's only, she, I don't know if she's even 40. She might be 40. So, she, you know, she's just this young, vital, wonderful person, and this horrible thing has happened to them. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be doing, uh, my Chicks with Balls book, I've got a, um, I, I've got my Chicks painting of her in it, if you order my Chicks with Balls book from my website and you write in the messages for Arabella, I will donate 50% of the price to Arabella's archiving and to her, you know, GoFundMe to, you know, basically make her life better while she's, while she's hanging around with us. So, um, so that, remember all, remember all that and I'll have all the information on my website too. Um, so I believe that brings us to our conclusion. Thank you for joining me tonight on Living Figuratively. Next week, we are going to be doing episode 53, which will be Kitsch in the Kitchen. And Kitsch is that funky word that defies definition where my Kitsch is amazing and spectacular. Other people's Kitsch is tacky and crappy. Um, so I will show you my kitsch, which obviously I think is spectacular, but you may disagree, but I do have kitsch in the kitchen. So that'll be same bad time, same bad channel, and it'll be the April Fool's edition, April 1st, next week, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And because tonight is the 52nd episode and the one year anniversary, I'm going to do the full Beverly Hillbillies outro. And did you know that it was called an outro? So... You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heap and helping of 
living figuratively, virtually that is, set a spell, take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, you hear?